Postman Pratt, Postman Pratt, Postman Pratt and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Postman Pat and the Pet Show. There was a new poster in Greendale Post Office which read Greendale Pet Show, Vicarage Garden, May the 16th. Stalls, refreshments, lots of prizes. That'll be a good day if it's fine, said Pat. I wonder if Miss Hubbard will be selling some of her nettle wine. I mustn't miss that. Never mind the wine, said Mrs Goggins. Aren't you going in for the pet show? It's a lot more fun if you show something. Well, I don't know, said Pat. I suppose we could show Julian's white mice. But the Reverend doesn't like mice. He'd run a mile if he saw them. No, you don't want to be showing mice, said Mrs Goggins. Why don't you show Jess? He's a lovely cat. He's sure to win a prize. Hmm said Pat. Not a bad idea. Perhaps I will. Mind you, I don't know what Jess will think of being in a show. When Pat told Sarah, the first thing she said was, If that cat's going in for the pet show, he'll need a bath and a good brushing. Just look at him. Jess had been after mice in the potage's barn. He looked very dusty, and he had pieces of straw in his fur. Jess doesn't like going in the bath, said Julian. Just like somebody else in this house, said Sarah. But he'll have to go in the bath just the same, show or no show. I don't think he's had a bath since he was stuck up that tree. After tea, Pat got the old baby bath out and put it on the kitchen table. Then he began to fill it with buckets of warm water. Sarah found a bottle of shampoo when Jess saw what was going on, he went and hid behind the sofa. He knew the baby bath was for him. Oh dear, Jess hated having a bath. He didn't like water. He didn't like soap. He didn't like shampoo. He could wash himself with his tongue, and that, he thought, was good enough for any cat. But Sarah found Jess behind the sofa and brought him to the kitchen, with all his claws out, and put him in the bath. What a splashing he made! It was like bathing ten cats all at once. If only you'd keep still, Jess. The soap wouldn't go in your eyes, said Pat. But Jess would not keep still. Jess could not keep still. And the soap and the water and the shampoo went in his eyes, and all over the table and the floor, and over Pat and Sarah and Julian. In the end, when Pat had mopped the floor, they all had to have a bath. And then, when they were all dry again, Jess had to be brushed and combed. He didn't like this either. This was Sarah's job, and she was as gentle as she knew how to be. But Jess's fur was so tangled with going through the hedges forwards and backwards and sideways and creeping in ditches and hunting for mice in the hay that the comb pulled and tugged at him and hurt him. Poor Jess. He didn't know why he had to be so clean and tidy. When all the brushing and combing was finished, Jess looked lovely. He looked like one of the cats advertising cat food on television. You're a real beauty now, Jess, said Sarah. You're sure to win the first prize at the show. The next day, Pat called on Miss Hubbard with a parcel, and she said, Have you got a new cat? Where has Jess gone? It is Jess, said Pat, laughing. He's just clean for once and he told Miss Hubbard all about Jessie's bath and the show. I have just the thing, she said. She took a yellow silk ribbon from her sewing box. Look, isn't it pretty? She tied it in a bow round Jessie's neck. Jess hated that bow. 
It tickled him, and he felt so silly in a yellow silk bow. He shook it, he bit it, he scratched it. In the end it fell off. When Pat found it, it was too dusty and dirty to put on again. And then what do you think Jess did, the day before the show? He went hunting rabbits somewhere the other side of the little wood. That meant going through quite a few hedges and muddy ditches, and he came back looking as though he'd never had a bath at all. "'Dear me, Jess,' said Pat, "'you can't go to the show like that.' But when Jess saw Pat getting the baby bath out again, he was off through the open door before Sarah could shut it. He didn't come back for his supper, and he found a warm place in the potage's barn to sleep. The next day was show day. There was no sign of Jess, so they had to go to the pet show without him. I don't think Jess wanted to come to the show anyway, said Julian. At Ted Glenn's coconut shy, Pat won a big food hamper. Sarah bought a woolly jumper at Granny Dryden's knitting stall. Julian bought a chocolate cake at Mrs. Thompson's cake stall. Alf Thompson's dog, Towser, won the pet show. Where, Where is Jess? Jess? they all asked. I think he's decided he isn't a show cat, said Pat. They had a lovely time at the show. Jess had a lovely time too, sunbathing on the roof of Alf's pigsty. But he was waiting by the back door when Pat and Sarah and Julian came home. Jess decided to stay at home when he was sure that no one was going to get the baby bath out. When Pat opened the food hamper, he found a big tin of sardines in it. Here's a prize for you, Jess, said Pat, even though you didn't come to the show. And Jess ate them for his supper. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat.